Chapter Seven of the Bird's Christmas Carol. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sarah Jennings. Music by Missy. The Bird's Christmas Carol by Kate Douglas Wiggin. Chapter Seven: The Birdling Flies Away. The Ruggleses had finished a last romp in the library with Paul and Hugh, and Uncle Jack had taken them home, and stayed a while to chat with Mrs. Ruggles, who opened the door for them, her face all aglow with excitement and delight. When Kitty and Clem showed her the oranges and nuts they had kept for her, she astonished them by saying that at six o'clock Mrs. Bird had sent her in the finest dinner she had ever seen in her life, and not only that, but a piece of dress goods that must have cost a dollar a yard if it cost a cent. As Uncle Jack went down the little porch, he looked back into the window for a last glimpse of the family. As the children gathered about their mother, showing their beautiful presents again and again, and then upward to a window in the great house yonder. A little child shall lead them, he thought. Well, if, if anything ever happens to Carol, I will take the Ruggleses under my wing. Softly, Uncle Jack, whispered the boys as he walked into the library a little while later. We are listening to the music in the church. They sang Carol Brothers Carol a while ago, and now we think the organist is beginning to play My Ain Country for Carol. I hope she hears it, said Mrs. Bird. But they are very late tonight, and I dare not speak to her lest she should be asleep. It is after ten o'clock. The boy soprano, clad in white surplice, stood in the organ loft. The lamps shone full upon his crown of fair hair and his pale face with its serious blue eyes looked paler than usual. Perhaps it was something in the tender thrill of the voice, or in the sweet words, but there were tears in many eyes, both in the church and in the great house next door. I am far from my home, I am weary of ten walls, for the longed-for home bring and my father's welcome smiles, and I'll never be for content until my eyes do see the garden gates of heaven in my own country. The Money tinted fresh and gay, and the birdies warble blithely, for my father made them say. But these sights and these sounds will as nothing be to me when I hear the angels sing. Like a band to its mirror, a wee birdie to its nest, I fain would be ganging now unto my father's breast, for he gathers in his arms helpless, worthless lambs like me, and carries them his There were tears in many eyes, but not in Carol's. The loving heart had quietly ceased to beat, and the wee birdie in the great house had flown to its home nest. Carol had fallen asleep. But as to the song, I think perhaps, I cannot say, she heard it after all. So sad an ending to a happy day, perhaps to those who were left. And yet Carol's mother, even in the freshness of her grief, was glad that her darling had slipped away on the loveliest day of her life, out of its glad content, into everlasting peace. She was glad that she had gone as she had come, on wings of song, when all the world was brimming over with joy, glad of every grateful smile, 
of every joyous burst of laughter, of every loving thought and word and deed the dear last day had brought. Sadness reigned, it is true, in the little house behind the garden. And one day poor Sarah Maud, with a courage born of despair, threw on her hood and shawl, walked straight to a certain house a mile away, dashed up the marble steps and into good Dr. Bartle's office, falling at his feet as she cried, "'Oh, sir, it was me and our children went to Miss Carroll's last dinner-party, and if we made her worse we can't never be happy again.' Then the kind old gentleman took her rough hand in his, and told her to dry her tears, for neither she nor any of her flock had hastened Carol's flight. Indeed, he said that had it not been for the strong hopes and wishes that filled her tired heart, she could not have stayed long enough to keep that last merry Christmas with her dear ones. And so the old years fraught with memories, die one after another, and the new years bright with hopes are born to take their places. But Carol lives again in every chime of Christmas bells that peal glad tidings, and in every Christmas anthem sung by childish voices. End of chapter 7 End of the Bird's Christmas Carol by Kate Douglas Wiggin